Hamas Arabic, HMAs Hamas, an acronym of Herkt Almkipt al Aslamit Harakat al Mukawama al Islamiyya Islamic Resistance Movement is a Palestinian Sunni Islamist fundamentalist organization. It has a social service wing, Dawa, and a military wing, the Is ad Din al Qassam Brigades. It has been the de facto governing authority of the Gaza Strip since its takeover of that area in 2007. During this period, it fought several wars with Israel. It is regarded, either in whole or in part, as a terrorist organization by several countries and international organizations, most notably by Israel, the United States and the European Union. Russia, China, and Turkey are among countries who do not regard it so. Hamas was founded in 1987, soon after the First Intifada broke out, as an offshoot of the Egyptian Muslim Brotherhood, which in its Gaza branch had been non-confrontational towards Israel, refrained from resistance, and was hostile to the PLO. Co-founder Sheikh Ahmed Yassin stated in 1987, and the Hamas Charter affirmed in 1988, that Hamas was founded to liberate Palestine, including modern-day Israel, from Israeli occupation and to establish an Islamic state in the area that is now Israel, the West Bank and the Gaza Strip. The group has stated that it may accept a 10-year truce if Israel withdraws to the 1967 borders and allows Palestinian refugees from 1948, including their descendants, to return to what is now Israel, although clarifying that this does not mean recognition of Israel or the end of the conflict. Hamas's military wing objected to the truce offer. Analysts have said that it seems clear that Hamas knows that many of its conditions for the truce could never be met. The military wing of Hamas has launched attacks against Israeli civilians and soldiers, often describing them as retaliatory, in particular for assassinations of the upper echelon of their leadership. Tactics have included suicide bombings and, since 2001, rocket attacks. Hamas's rocket arsenal, though mainly consisting of short-range homemade Qassam rockets, also includes long-range weapons that have reached major Israeli cities including Tel Aviv and Haifa. The attacks on civilians have been condemned as war crimes and crimes against humanity by human rights groups such as Human Rights Watch. A 2017 Palestinian Center for Public Opinion poll in the Palestinian territories revealed that Hamas violence and rhetoric against Israelis are unpopular and that a majority of Palestinians would rather Hamas accept a permanent two-state solution based on the 1967 borders. In the January 2006 Palestinian parliamentary elections, Hamas won a plurality in the Palestinian parliament, defeating the PLO-affiliated Fatah party. Following the elections, the Quartet the United States, Russia, United Nations, and European Union made future foreign assistance to the PA conditional upon the future government's commitment to non-violence, recognition of the State of Israel, and acceptance of previous agreements. Hamas rejected those changes, which led to the Quartet suspending its foreign assistance program and Israel imposing economic sanctions on the Hamas-led administration. In March 2007, a national unity government headed by Prime Minister Ismail Haniya of Hamas was briefly formed, but this failed to restart international financial assistance. Tensions over control of Palestinian security forces soon erupted in the 2007 Battle of Gaza, after which Hamas took control of Gaza, while its officials were ousted from government positions in the West Bank. Israel and Egypt then imposed an economic blockade of the Gaza Strip, on the grounds that Fatah forces were no longer providing security there. In 2011, Hamas and Fatah announced a reconciliation agreement that provides for creation of a joint caretaker Palestinian government. Progress stalled, until an April 2014 agreement to form a compromise unity government, with elections to be held in late 2014. etymology. <inaudible> <inaudible> Hamas is an acronym of the Arabic phrase Herkt al-Mukhtab al-Islamit or Harakat al-Mukawama al-Islamiyah, meaning Islamic Resistance Movement. The Arabic word Hamas (HMAs) means courage or zeal. The Hamas Covenant interprets its name to mean strength and bravery. Topic <laughs> aims. Hamas, as its name Islamic Resistance Movement implies, aims to liberate Palestine from the Israeli occupation by resisting it. And according to Hamas armed branch is Ad-Din al-Qassam Brigades, 
to contribute in the effort of liberating Palestine and restoring the rights of the Palestinian people under the sacred Islamic teachings of the Holy Quran, the Sunnah traditions of Prophet Muhammad peace and blessings of Allah be upon him and the traditions of Muslims rulers and scholars noted for their piety and dedication. Al Qassam Brigades aims to liberate all of Palestine from what they describe as Zionist occupation, and to achieve the rights of the Palestinian people that were robbed by the occupation, and it consider itself part of the movement of a project of national liberation. <laughs> <laughs> Leadership and structure Hamas inherited from its predecessor a tripartite structure that consisted in the provision of social services, of religious training and military operations under a shura council. Traditionally it had four distinct functions, a, a charitable social welfare division b, a military division for procuring weapons and undertaking operations al al c, a security service and d, a media branch Hamas has both an internal leadership within the West Bank and the Gaza Strip, and an external leadership, split between a Gaza group directed by Musa Muhammad Abu Marzuk from his exile first in Damascus and then in Egypt, and a Kuwaiti group Kuwaitia under Khalid Mashal. The Kuwaiti group of Palestinian exiles began to receive extensive funding from the Gulf states after its leader Mashal broke with Yasser Arafat's decision to side with Saddam Hussein in the invasion of Kuwait, with Mashal insisting that Iraq withdraw. On 6 May 2017, Hamas Shura Council chose Ismail Hariya to become the new leader, to replace Mashal. The exact nature of the organization is unclear, secrecy being maintained for fear of Israeli assassinations and to conceal operational activities. Formally, Hamas maintains the wings are separate and independent. Matthew Levitt maintains this is a public myth. Davis argues that they are both separate and combined for reasons of internal and external political necessity. Communication between the political and military wings of Hamas is difficult, owing to the thoroughness of Israeli intelligence surveillance and the existence of an extensive base of informants. After the assassination of Abdul Aziz al Rantisi, the occasional political direction of the militant wing diminished, with field commanders given discretional autonomy on operations. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Consultative councils. The governing body is the Majlis al-Shura. The principle behind the council is based on the Quranic concept of consultation and popular assembly shura, which Hamas leaders argue provides for democracy within an Islamic framework. As the organization grew more complex and Israeli pressure increased it needed a broader base for decisions, the Shura Council was renamed the General Consultative Council, elected from members of local council groups and this in turn elected a 15-member Politburo al -Maktab al that made decisions at the highest level. Representatives come from Gaza, the West Bank, leaders in exile and Israeli prisons. This organ was located in Damascus until the Syrian civil war led it to transfer to Qatar in January 2012, when Hamas sided with the civil opposition against the regime of Bashar al-Assad. Social Services Wing Hamas developed its social welfare program by replicating the model established by Egypt's Muslim Brotherhood. For them, charity and the development of one's community are prescribed by religion, and, at the same time, are to be understood as forms of resistance. In Islamic tradition, Dawa lit, the call to God obliges the faithful to reach out to others by both proselytizing and by charitable works, and typically the latter center on the mosques, which make use of both WAQF endowment resources and charitable donations zakat to fund grassroots services like nurseries, schools, orphanages, soup kitchens, women's activities, library services, and even sporting clubs within a larger context of preaching and political discussions. In the 1990s, some 85% of its budget was allocated to the provision of social services. It has been called perhaps the most significant social services actor in Palestine. By 2000 it or its affiliated charities ran roughly 40% of the social institutions in the West Bank and Gaza and, with other Islamic charities, by 2005 was supporting 120,000 individuals with monthly financial support in Gaza. Part of the appeal of these institutions is that they fill a vacuum in the administration by the PLO of the Palestinian territories, which had failed to cater to the demand for jobs and broad social services, and is widely viewed as corrupt. 
As late as 2005, the budget of Hamas, drawing on global charity contributions, was mostly tied up in covering running expenses for its social programs, which extended from the supply of housing, food and water for the needy to more general functions like financial aid, medical assistance, educational development and religious instruction. A certain accounting flexibility allowed these funds to cover both charitable causes and military operations, permitting transfer from one to the other. The Dawa infrastructure itself was understood, within the Palestinian context, as providing the soil from which a militant opposition to the occupation would flower. In this regard, it differs from the rival Palestinian Islamic Jihad, which lacks any social welfare network and relies on spectacular terrorist attacks to recruit adherents. In 2007, through funding from Iran, Hamas managed to allocate at a cost of $60 million, monthly stipends of $100 for 100,000 workers, and a similar sum for 3,000 fishermen laid idle by Israel's imposition of restrictions on fishing offshore, plus grants totaling $45 million to detainees and their families. Matthew Levitt argues that Hamas grants to people are subject to a rigorous cost-benefit analysis of how beneficiaries will support Hamas, with those linked to terrorist activities receiving more than others. Israel holds the families of suicide bombers accountable and bulldozes their homes, whereas the families of Hamas activists who have been killed or wounded during militant operations are given an initial, one-time grant varying between $500 to $5,000, together with a $100 monthly allowance. Rent assistance is also given to families whose homes have been destroyed by Israeli bombing though families unaffiliated with Hamas are said to receive less. Until 2007, these activities extended to the West Bank, but, after a PLO crackdown, now continue exclusively in the Gaza Strip. After the 2013 Egyptian coup d'état deposed the elected Muslim Brotherhood government of Mohamed Morsi in 2013, Hamas found itself in a financial straitjacket and has since endeavored to throw the burden of responsibility for public works infrastructure in the Gaza Strip back onto the Palestinian National Authority, but without success. <laughs> <laughs> Military wing The Is Ad Din al Qassam Brigades, Hamas's military wing, was formed in either mid 1991 or 1992, under the direction of Yahya Ayish, a Hamas field commander and bomb maker assassinated by Israel in 1996. It was constituted from units associated with the earlier Al Jihad wa Dawa, an umbrella group that had gathered in militants from various Islamic resistance cells like the Al Mujahidin al Palestinian Palestinian fighters, established by Salah Shahadi in 1986. The wing takes its name from the pre war militant Palestinian nationalist Sheikh Is Ad Din al Qassam, though Hamas cells sometimes refer to themselves as students of Ayesh, students of the engineer, or Yahya Ayish units. At the outset, weapons were hard to come by, and the organization began to resort to intermittent kidnappings of soldiers to secure arms and munitions. This approach had been justified two years earlier when, in the wake of the killing of some 20 Palestinians were killed by Israeli forces dispersing protesters at the Al-Aqsa Mosque in 1990, Hamas had declared every Israeli soldier a legitimate target. Ayish, with a degree in electrical engineering, quickly improved Hamas's strike capacity by developing IEDs and promoting the tactic of suicide bombings. By the time of the Al-Aqsa Intifada, Hamas's laboratories had devised a primitive form of rocketry, the Qassam-1, which they first launched in October 2000, carrying a 500-gram warhead with a throw range of 4 kilometers. Both propellant and the explosive were manufactured from chemical fertilizers, though TNT was also tried. Over the next five years of the conflict, a 3 kg warhead armed version with a strike range of 6 to 8 km, the Qassam II, was also produced and in an incremental rise, these rocket types were fired towards Israeli settlements along the Gaza Strip, 4 in 2001, 35 in 2002, 155 in 2003, 281 in 2004, and 179 in 2005. By 2005, the Qassam III had been engineered with a 12 to 14 km range and a 15 kilo warhead. By 2006, 942 such rockets were launched into southern Israel. During the war with Israel in 2008-2009, Hamas deployed 122 Mgrad rocketry with a 20 to 40 km range and a 30 kg warhead and a variety of guided Kornet anti-tank missiles. 
By 2012 Hamas had engineered a version of the Farge 5 rocket, which was capable of reaching as far as Tel Aviv, as was shown after the assassination of Ahmed Jabari in that year. In the 2014 war its advanced rocketry reached Jerusalem, Tel Aviv and Haifa. Hamas deployed its increasingly sophisticated rocketry to replace its martyrdom operations. While the number of members is known only to the brigade's leadership, Israel estimates the brigades have a core of several hundred members who receive military style training, including training in Iran and in Syria, before the Syrian civil war. Additionally, the brigades have an estimated 10,000 to 17,000 operatives, forming a backup force whenever circumstances call for reinforcements for the brigade. Recruitment training lasts for two years. The group's ideology outlines its aim as the liberation of Palestine and the restoration of Palestinian rights under the dispensations set forth in the Quran, and this translates into three policy priorities. To evoke the spirit of jihad resistance among Palestinians, Arabs, and Muslims, to defend Palestinians and their land against the Zionist occupation and its manifestations, to liberate Palestinians and their land that was usurped by the Zionist occupation forces and settlers. According to its official stipulations, the Is ad Din al Qassam Brigade's military operations are to be restricted to operating only inside Palestine, engaging with Israeli soldiers, and in exercising the right of self defense against armed settlers. They are to avoid civilian targets, to respect the enemy's humanity by refraining from mutilation, defacement, or excessive killing, and to avoid targeting Westerners either in the occupied zones or beyond. In practice, Hamas altered its approach, restricting actions to legitimate military targets by extending them to Israeli civilians after seven years. Though between 1996 and 2001 it generally refrained from targeting Israeli civilians, it adopted sporadic suicide bombings in the wake of the Cave of the Patriarchs massacre, when an Israeli settler in military fatigues, Baruch Goldstein, shot dead 29 Muslims at prayer in 1993. After the Al-Aqsa revolt, the brigades were behind most of the suicide bombings in Israel, a measure it defended as a form of reciprocity. Down to 2007, the brigades are estimated to have lost some 800 operatives in conflicts with Israeli forces. The leadership has been consistently undermined by targeted assassinations. Aside from Yahya Ayish, the 5th of January 1996, it has lost Ahmad Akhil, the 24th of November 1993, Salah Shahadi, the 23rd of July 2002, Ibrahim al makadma the 8th of March 2003, Ismail Abu Shanib, the 21st of August 2003, Ahmed Yassin, March 22nd 2004, and Abdul Aziz al Rantisi, April 17th 2004. After Israel arrested hundreds of its members in May 1989, Hamas regionalized its command system to make its operative structure more diffuse, and minimize the chances of being detected. The Is ad Din al Qassam Brigades groups its fighters in four to five man cells, which in turn are integrated into companies and battalions. Unlike the political section, which is split between an internal and external structure, the brigades are under a local Palestinian leadership, and disobedience with the decisions taken by the political leadership have been relatively rare. Although the Is al Din al Qassam brigades are an integral part of Hamas, the exact nature of the relationship is hotly debated. They appear to operate at times independently of Hamas, exercising a certain autonomy. Some cells have independent links with the external leadership, enabling them to bypass the hierarchical command chain and political leadership in Gaza. Alana Cass and Bart O'Neill, likening Hamas's relationship with the brigades to the political party Sinn Féin's relationship to the military arm of the Irish Republican Army, quote a senior Hamas official as stating, The Is al-Din al-Qassam Brigade is a separate armed military wing, which has its own leaders who do not take their orders from Hamas and do not tell us of their plans in advance. Matthew Levitt on the other hand argues vocally for the idea that Hamas's welfare institutions act as a mere facade or front for the financing of terrorism, and dismisses the idea of two wings as a myth. He cites Sheikh Ahmad Yassin stating in 1998, we cannot separate the wing from the body. If we do so, the body will not be able to fly. Hamas is one body. Topic. Finances and funding. 
At the 1993 Philadelphia Conference, Hamas leaders' statements indicated that they read George H. W. Bush's outline of a new world order as embodying a tacit aim to destroy Islam, and that therefore funding should focus on enhancing the Islamic roots of Palestinian society and promoting jihad in the occupying territories. Hamas's budget, calculated to be roughly $70 million, 2011, is derived in large part from foreign, rather than internal Palestinian, sources. Only two Israeli-Palestinian sources figure in a list seized in 2004, while the other contributors were donor bodies located in Jordan, Qatar, Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, Britain, Germany, the United States, United Arab Emirates, Italy and France. Much of the money raised comes from sources that direct their assistance to what Hamas describes as its charitable work for Palestinians, but investments in support of its ideological position are also relevant, with Persian Gulf states and Saudi Arabia prominent in the latter. Matthew Levitt states that Hamas also taps money from corporations, criminal organizations and financial networks that support terror, and is believed to engage in cigarette and drug smuggling, multimedia copyright infringement and credit card fraud. Fattori states that, more than other similar organizations, it is particularly careful about keeping resources for its militant, political and public works activities separate. The United States, Israel and the EU have shut down many charities and organs that channel money to Hamas, such as the Holy Land Foundation for Relief. Between 1992 and 2001 this group is said to have provided $6.8 million to Palestinian charities of the $57 million collected. By 2001, it was alleged to have given Hamas $13 million, and was shut down shortly afterwards. About half of Hamas's funding came from states in the Persian Gulf down to the mid 2000s. Saudi Arabia supplied half of the Hamas budget of $50 million in the early 2000s, but, under U.S. pressure, began cut its funding by cracking down on Islamic charities and private donor transfers to Hamas in 2004, which by 2006 drastically reduced the flow of money from that area. Iran and Syria, in the aftermath of Hamas's 2006 electoral victory, stepped in to fill the shortfall. Saudi funding, negotiated with third parties like Egypt, remained supportive of Hamas as a Sunni group but chose to provide more assistance to the PNA, the electoral loser, when the EU responded to the outcome by suspending its monetary aid. Iran in the 1980s began by providing 10% of Hamas's funding, which it increased annually until by the 1990s it supplied $30 million. It accounted for $22 million, over a quarter of Hamas's budget, by the late 2000s. According to Matthew Levitt, Iran preferred direct financing to operative groups rather than charities, requiring video proof of attacks. Much of the Iran funding is said to be channeled through Hezbollah. After 2006 Iran's willingness to take over the burden of the shortfall created by the drying up of Saudi funding also reflected the geopolitical tensions between the two, since, though Shiite, Iran was supporting a Sunni group traditionally closely linked with the Saudi Kingdom. The U.S. imposed sanctions on Iran's bank Sadarit, alleging it had funneled hundreds of millions to Hamas. The U.S. has expressed concerns that Hamas obtains funds through Palestinian and Lebanese sympathizers of Arab descent in the Faz du Aguaku area of the tri-border region of Latin America, an area long associated with arms trading, drug trafficking, contraband, the manufacture of counterfeit goods, money laundering and currency fraud. The State Department adds that confirmatory information of a Hamas operational presence there is lacking. After 2009, sanctions on Iran made funding difficult, forcing Hamas to rely on religious donations by individuals in the West Bank, Qatar, and Saudi Arabia. Funds amounting to tens of millions of dollars raised in the Gulf states were transferred through the Rafah border crossing. These were not sufficient to cover the costs of governing the Strip and running the al Qassam brigades, and when tensions arose with Iran over support of President Assad in Syria, Iran dropped its financial assistance to the government, restricting its funding to the military wing, which meant a drop from $150 million in 2012 to $60 million the following year. A further drop occurred in 2015 when Hamas expressed its criticisms of Iran's role in the Yemeni civil war. History <inaudible> Gaza Islamic roots and establishment of Hamas 
Hamas rose as an offshoot of the Gaza Muhammad al Islamiyah branch of the Egyptian Muslim Brotherhood, which had been actively encouraged by Israel to expand as a counterweight to the influence of the secular Palestine Liberation Organization and had since 1973 been quiescent and non confrontational towards Israel. Aside from developing Islamic charities to provide humanitarian assistance to Palestinians, it emphasized social justice and the subordination of the world to the sovereignty of God Hamas was founded in 1987, soon after the outbreak of the First Intifada, the first popular uprising against the Israeli occupation. Creating Hamas to participate in the revolt was regarded as a survival measure to enable the Brotherhood itself, which refused to fight against Israel, to hold its own against other competing Palestinian nationalist groups. By forming a military wing distinct from its social charity organizations, it was hoped that the latter would be insulated from being targeted by Israel. Co-founder Sheikh Ahmed Yassin was convinced that Israel was endeavoring to destroy Islam, and concluded that loyal Muslims had a religious obligation to destroy Israel. The short-term goal of Hamas was to liberate Palestine, including modern-day Israel, from Israeli occupation. The long-term aim sought to establish an Islamic state from the Jordan River to the Mediterranean Sea. Topic: <laughs> Hamas Charter 1988. The foundational document, the Hamas Charter is dated 18 August 1988, and contains both anti-Semitic passages, characterizations of Israeli society as Nazi-like in its cruelty, and irredentist claims that have never been revoked despite what some observers say are later policy changes in the organization regarding Israel and the Jews. It declares all of Palestine waqf property endowed by God to Muslims, with religious coexistence under Islam's wing. The Charter rejects a two-state solution, envisaging no peaceful settlement of the conflict apart from jihad. It states that the movement's aim is to raise the banner of Allah over every inch of Palestine, for under the wing of Islam followers of all religions can coexist in security and safety where their lives, possessions and rights are concerned Article 6 and adds that, when our enemies usurp some Islamic lands, jihad becomes a duty binding on all Muslims, for which the whole of the land is non-negotiable, a position likened, without the racist sentiments present in the Hamas Charter, to that in the Likud party platform and in movements like Gush Amunim. For Hamas, to concede territory is seen as equivalent to renouncing Islam itself. Decades down the line, Hamas's official position changed with regard to a two-state solution. Khalid Mashal, its leader, has publicly affirmed the movement's readiness to accept such a division. When Hamas won a majority in the 2006 Palestinian legislative election, Hanaya, then president-elect, sent messages to both George Bush and Israel's leaders asking to be recognized and offering a long-term truce along the 1967 border lines. No response was forthcoming. Musa Marzouk said in 2007 that the charter could not be altered because it would look like a compromise not acceptable to the street and risk fracturing the party's unity. Hamas leader Khalid Meshal has stated that the charter is a piece of history and no longer relevant, but cannot be changed for internal reasons. Ahmed Youssef, senior advisor to Ismail Haniyeh, added in 2011 that it reflected the views of the elders in the face of a relentless occupation. The details of its religious and political language had not been examined within the framework of international law, and an internal committee review to amend it was shelved out of concern not to offer concessions to Israel, as had Fatah, on a silver platter. While Hamas representatives recognize the problem, one official notes that Arafat got very little in return for changing the PLO charter under the Oslo Accords, and that there is agreement that little is gained from a non-violent approach. Richard Davis says the dismissal by contemporary leaders of its relevance and yet the suspension of a desire to rewrite it reflects the differing constituencies Hamas must address, the domestic audience and international relations. The charter itself is considered an historical relic. In March 2006, Hamas released its official legislative program. The document clearly signaled that Hamas could refer the issue of recognizing Israel to a national referendum. Under the heading, Recognition of Israel, it stated simply, AFP, the 11th of March 06. The question of recognizing Israel is not the jurisdiction of one faction, nor the government, but a decision for the Palestinian people. This was a major shift away from their 1988 charter. A few months later, via University of Maryland's Jerome Siegel, the group sent a letter to U.S. President George W. Bush stating they 
don't mind having a Palestinian state in the 1967 borders," and asked for direct negotiations. Siegel emphasized that a state within the 1967 borders and a truce for many years could be considered Hamas's de facto recognition of Israel. In an April 2008 meeting between Hamas leader Khalid Mashal and former U.S. President Jimmy Carter, an understanding was reached in which Hamas agreed it would respect the creation of a Palestinian state in the territory seized by Israel in the 1967 Six Day War, provided this were ratified by the Palestinian people in a referendum. Hamas later publicly offered a long-term truce with Israel if Israel agreed to return to its 1967 borders and grant the right of return to all Palestinian refugees. In November 2008, Hamas leader Ismail Haniya restated that Hamas was willing to accept a Palestinian state within the 1967 borders, and offered Israel a long-term truce, if Israel recognized the Palestinians' national rights. In 2009, in a letter to UN Secretary General Ban Ki moon, Haniya repeated his group's support for a two state settlement based on 1967 borders. We would never thwart efforts to create an independent Palestinian state with borders from June 4, 1967, with Jerusalem as its capital. On December 1, 2010, Ismail Haniya again repeated, We accept a Palestinian state on the borders of 1967 with Jerusalem as its capital, the release of Palestinian prisoners, and the resolution of the issue of refugees. And Hamas will respect the results of a referendum regardless of whether it differs with its ideology and principles. In February 2012, according to the Palestinian Authority, Hamas forswore the use of violence. Evidence for this was provided by an eruption of violence from Islamic Jihad in March 2012 after an Israeli assassination of a Jihad leader, during which Hamas refrained from attacking Israel. Quote, Israel, despite its mantra that because Hamas is sovereign in Gaza it is responsible for what goes on there, almost seems to understand, wrote Israeli journalists Avi Isaacaroff and Amos Harrell, and has not bombed Hamas offices or installations. Israel has rejected some truce offers by Hamas because it contends the group uses them to prepare for more fighting rather than peace. The Atlantic magazine columnist Jeffrey Goldberg, along with other analysts, believes Hamas may be incapable of permanent reconciliation with Israel. Mekhimer Abusada, a political scientist at Al-Azhar University, writes that Hamas talks of Hudna temporary ceasefire, not of peace or reconciliation with Israel. They believe over time they will be strong enough to liberate all historic Palestine. 1990s Hamas carried out its first attack against Israel in 1989, abducting and killing two soldiers. The Israel Defense Forces immediately arrested Yassin and sentenced him to life in prison, and deported 400 Hamas activists, including Zahar, to South Lebanon, which at the time was occupied by Israel. During this time Hamas built a relationship with Hezbollah. Hamas's military branch, the Is Ad Din al qassam Brigades, was created in 1991. During the 1990s the al qassam Brigades conducted numerous attacks on Israel, with both civilian and military victims. In April 1993, suicide bombings in the West Bank began. After the February 1994 massacre by Baruch Goldstein of 30 Muslim civilians in a Hebron mosque, the Al Qassam Brigades began suicide attacks inside Israel. In December 1992, Israel responded to the killing of a border police officer by deporting 415 leading figures of Hamas and Islamic Jihad to Lebanon, which provoked international condemnation and a unanimous UN Security Council resolution condemning the action. Although the suicide attacks by the al qassam brigades and other groups violated the 1993 Oslo Accords which Hamas opposed, Palestinian Authority President Yasser Arafat was reluctant to pursue the attackers and may have had inadequate means to do so. Some analysts state that the Palestinian Authority could have stopped the suicide and other attacks on civilians but refused to do so. According to the Congressional Research Service, Hamas admitted to having executed Palestinians accused of collaborating with Israeli authorities in the 1990s. A transcript of a training film by the Al Qassam Brigades tells how Hamas operatives kidnapped Palestinians accused of collaboration and then forced confessions before executing them. 
In 1996, Yahya Ayash, the chief bombmaker of Hamas and the leader of the West Bank Battalion of the Is Ad Din al Qassam Brigades, was assassinated by the Israeli Secret Service. In September 1997, Israeli agents in Jordan attempted but failed to assassinate Hamas leader Khalid Mashal, leading to chilled relations between the two countries and release of Sheikh Yassin, Hamas's spiritual leader, from Israeli prison. Two years later Hamas was banned in Jordan, reportedly in part at the request of the United States, Israel, and the Palestinian Authority. Jordan's King Abdullah feared the activities of Hamas and its Jordanian allies would jeopardize peace negotiations with Israel, and accused Hamas of engaging in illegitimate activities within Jordan. In mid-September 1999, authorities arrested Hamas leaders Khalid Mashal and Ibrahim Gosheh on their return from a visit to Iran, and charged them with being members of an illegal organization, storing weapons, conducting military exercises, and using Jordan as a training base. Hamas leaders denied the charges. Mashal was exiled and eventually settled in Syria. He fled to Qatar in 2012 as a result of the Syrian civil war. Second Intifada All Qassam Brigade's militants were among the armed groups that launched both military style attacks and suicide bombings against Israeli civilian and military targets during the Second Intifada, also known as the Al Aqsa Intifada (Arabic: Anfat al Aqsa Intifada al Aqsa, Hebrew: Intifad al Qush Intifada al Aqsa), which began in late September 2000. This Palestinian uprising against Israeli rule in the occupied territories was much more violent than the first intifada. The military and civilian death toll is estimated at 5,500 Palestinians and more than 1,100 Israelis, as well as 64 foreigners. A 2007 study of Palestinian suicide bombings during the Second Intifada September 2000 through August 2005 found that about 40% were carried out by the Al-Qassam brigades. The immediate trigger for the uprising is disputed, but a more general cause, writes U.S. political science professor Jeremy Pressman, was popular Palestinian discontent that grew during the Oslo peace process because the reality on the ground did not match the expectations created by the peace agreements. Hamas would be the beneficiary of this growing discontent in the 2006 Palestinian Authority legislative elections. In January 2004, Hamas leader Sheikh Ahmed Yassin said that the group would end armed resistance against Israel in exchange for a Palestinian state in the West Bank, Gaza Strip, and East Jerusalem, and that restoring Palestinians' historical rights relating to the 1948 Palestinian exodus would be left for future generations. On January 25, 2004, senior Hamas official Abdul Aziz al Rantisi offered a 10 year truce, or Hudna, in return for the establishment of a Palestinian state and the complete withdrawal by Israel from the territories captured in the 1967 Six Day War. Al Rantisi stated that Hamas had come to the conclusion that it was difficult to liberate all our land at this stage, so we accept a phased liberation. Israel immediately dismissed al Rantisi's statements as insincere and a smokescreen for military preparations. Yassin was assassinated on March 22, 2004, by a targeted Israeli air strike, and al Rantisi was assassinated by a similar air strike on April 18, 2004. 2006 presidential and legislative elections While Hamas boycotted the 2005 Palestinian presidential election, it did participate in the 2005 municipal elections organized by Yasser Arafat in the occupied territories. In those elections it won control of over one-third of Palestinian municipal councils, besting Fatah, which had for long been the biggest force in Palestinian politics. In its election manifesto for the 2006 Palestinian legislative election, Hamas omitted a call for an end to Israel, though it did still call for armed struggle against the occupation. Hamas won the 2006 elections, winning 76 of the 132 seats to Fatah's 43. Seen by many as primarily a rejection of the Fatah government's corruption and ineffectiveness, the Hamas victory seemingly had brought to an end 40 years of PLO domination of Palestinian politics. Following its electoral victory, Hamas assumed the administration of the Gaza Strip and introduced radical changes. Writing in Foreign Affairs, Daniel Byman stated that, 
After it took over the Gaza Strip Hamas revamped the police and security forces, cutting them 50,000 members on paper, at least under Fatah to smaller, efficient forces of just over 10,000, which then cracked down on crime and gangs. No longer did groups openly carry weapons or steal with impunity. People paid their taxes and electric bills, and in return authorities picked up garbage and put criminals in jail. Gaza neglected under Egyptian and then Israeli control, and misgoverned by Palestinian leader Yasser Arafat and his successors finally has a real government. In early February 2006, Hamas offered Israel a 10-year truce, in return for a complete Israeli withdrawal from the occupied Palestinian territories, the West Bank, Gaza Strip and East Jerusalem and recognition of Palestinian rights including the right of return. Mashal added that Hamas was not calling for a final end to armed operations against Israel, and it would not impede other Palestinian groups from carrying out such operations. After the election, the Quartet on the Middle East the United States, Russia, the European Union EU, and the United Nations stated that assistance to the Palestinian Authority would only continue if Hamas renounced violence, recognized Israel, and accepted previous Israeli-Palestinian agreements, which Hamas refused to do. The Quartet then imposed a freeze on all international aid to the Palestinian territories. In 2006 after the Gaza election, Hamas leader sent a letter addressed to George W. Bush where he among other things declared that Hamas would accept a state on the 1967 borders including a truce. However, the Bush administration did not reply. <laughs> <laughs> Legislative policy and reforming the judiciary Stress the separation between the three powers, the legislative, executive and judicial, activate the role of the constitutional court, reform the judicial Supreme Council and choose its members by elections and on the basis of qualifications rather than partisan, personal, and social considerations. Enact the necessary laws that guarantee the neutrality of general prosecutor and laws that will stop any transgression by the executive power on the Constitution. Topic. Public freedoms and citizen rights Achieve equality before the law among citizens in rights and duties, bring security to all citizens and protect their properties and assure their safety against arbitrary arrest, torture, or revenge, stress the culture of dialogue, support the press and media institutions and maintain the right of journalists to access and to publish information, maintain freedom and independence of professional syndicates and preserve the rights of their membership." <laughs> hamas fatah conflict After the formation of the Hamas-led cabinet on March 20, 2006, tensions between Fatah and Hamas militants progressively rose in the Gaza Strip as Fatah commanders refused to take orders from the government while the Palestinian Authority initiated a campaign of demonstrations, assassinations and abductions against Hamas, which led to Hamas responding. Israeli intelligence warned Mahmoud Abbas that Hamas had planned to kill him at his office in Gaza. According to a Palestinian source close to Abbas, Hamas considers President Abbas to be a barrier to its complete control over the Palestinian Authority and decided to kill him. In a statement to Al Jazeera, Hamas leader Mohammed Natsal accused Abbas of being party to besieging and isolating the Hamas led government. On June 9, 2006, during an Israeli artillery operation, an explosion occurred on a busy Gaza beach, killing eight Palestinian civilians. It was assumed that Israeli shellings were responsible for the killings, but Israeli government officials denied this. Hamas formally withdrew from its 16-month ceasefire on June 10, taking responsibility for the subsequent Qassam rocket attacks launched from Gaza into Israel. On June 25, two Israeli soldiers were killed and another, Gilad Shalit, captured following an incursion by the Is Ad Din al Qassam brigades, popular resistance committees, and Army of Islam. In response, the Israeli military launched Operation Summer Rains three days later, to secure the release of the kidnapped soldier, arresting 64 Hamas officials. Among them were eight Palestinian Authority cabinet ministers and up to 20 members of the Palestinian Legislative Council. The arrests, along with other events, effectively prevented the Hamas dominated legislature from functioning during most of its term. Shalit was held captive until 2011, when he was released in exchange for 1,027 Palestinian prisoners. 
Since then, Hamas has continued building a network of internal and cross-border tunnels, which are used to store and deploy weapons, shield militants, and facilitate cross-border attacks. Destroying the tunnels was a primary objective of Israeli forces in the 2014 Israel Gaza conflict. In February 2007, Saudi sponsored negotiations in Mecca produced agreement on a signed by Mahmoud Abbas on behalf of Fatah and Khalid Mashal on behalf of Hamas. The new government was called on to achieve Palestinian national goals as approved by the Palestine National Council, the clauses of the Basic Law and the National Reconciliation Document, the Prisoner's Document as well as the decisions of the Arab summit in March 2007 the Palestinian Legislative Council established a national unity government with 83 representatives voting in favor and 3 against government ministers were sworn in by Mahmoud Abbas the chairman of the Palestinian Authority at a ceremony held simultaneously in Gaza and Ramallah in June that year renewed fighting broke out between Hamas and Fatah in the course of the June 2007 Battle of Gaza, Hamas exploited the near total collapse of Palestinian Authority forces in Gaza, to seize control of Gaza, ousting Fatah officials. President Mahmoud Abbas then dismissed the Hamas-led Palestinian Authority government, and outlawed the Hamas militia. At least 600 Palestinians died in fighting between Hamas and Fatah. Human Rights Watch, a U.S. based group, accused both sides in the conflict of torture and war crimes. Human Rights Watch estimates several hundred Gazans were maimed and tortured in the aftermath of the Gaza War. Seventy three Gazan men accused of collaborating had their arms and legs broken by unidentified perpetrators and 18 Palestinians accused of collaborating with Israel, who had escaped from Gaza's main prison compound after Israel bombed the facility, were executed by Hamas security officials in the first days of the conflict. Hamas security forces attacked hundreds Fatah officials who supported Israel. Human Rights Watch interviewed one such person. There were eight of us sitting there. We were all from Fatah. Then three masked militants broke in. They were dressed in brown camouflage military uniforms, they all had guns. They pointed their guns at us and cursed us, then they began beating us with iron rods, including a 10-year-old boy whom they hit in the face. They said we were collaborators and unfaithful. They beat me with iron sticks and gun butts for 15 minutes. They were yelling, you are happy that Israel is bombing us, until people came out of their houses, and they withdrew. In March 2012 Mahmoud Abbas stated that there were no political differences between Hamas and Fatah as they had reached agreement on a joint political platform and on a truce with Israel. Commenting on relations with Hamas, Abbas revealed in an interview with Al Jazeera that, We agreed that the period of calm would be not only in the Gaza Strip, but also in the West Bank. Adding that, we also agreed on a peaceful popular resistance against Israel, the establishment of a Palestinian state along the 1967 borders and that the peace talks would continue if Israel halted settlement construction and accepted our conditions." Progress has stalled, until an April 2014 agreement to form a compromise unity government, with elections to be held in late 2014. 2008–2009 Gaza War On June 17, 2008, Egyptian mediators announced that an informal truce had been agreed to between Hamas and Israel. Hamas agreed to cease rocket attacks on Israel, while Israel agreed to allow limited commercial shipping across its border with Gaza, barring any breakdown of the tentative peace deal. Hamas also hinted that it would discuss the release of Gilad Shalit. Israeli sources state that Hamas also committed itself to enforce the ceasefire on the other Palestinian organizations. Even before the truce was agreed to, some on the Israeli side were not optimistic about it, Shin Bet chief Yuval Diskin stating in May 2008 that a ground incursion into Gaza was unavoidable and would more effectively quell arms smuggling and pressure Hamas into relinquishing power. While Hamas was careful to maintain the ceasefire, the lull was sporadically violated by other groups, sometimes in defiance of Hamas. For example, on June 24 Islamic Jihad launched rockets at the Israeli town of Daro. Israel called the attack a grave violation of the informal truce, and closed its border crossings with Gaza. On November 4, 2008, Israeli forces, in an attempt to stop construction of a tunnel, killed six Hamas gunmen in a raid inside the Gaza Strip. 
Hamas responded by resuming rocket attacks, a total of 190 rockets in November according to Israel's military. With the six-month truce officially expired on December 19, Hamas launched 50 to more than 70 rockets and mortars into Israel over the next three days, though no Israelis were injured. On December 21, Hamas said it was ready to stop the attacks and renew the truce if Israel stopped its aggression in Gaza and opened up its border crossings. On December 27 and 28, Israel implemented Operation Cast Lead against Hamas. Egyptian President Hosni Mubarak said, We warned Hamas repeatedly that rejecting the truce would push Israel to aggression against Gaza. According to Palestinian officials, over 280 people were killed and 600 were injured in the first two days of airstrikes. Most were Hamas police and security officers, though many civilians also died. According to Israel, militant training camps, rocket manufacturing facilities and weapons warehouses that had been pre-identified were hit, and later they attacked rocket and mortar squads who fired around 180 rockets and mortars at Israeli communities. Chief of Gaza Police Force Tafiq Jabber, head of the General Security Service Salah Abu Shrak, senior religious authority and security officer Nazar Rayan, and Interior Minister Said Sayam were among those killed during the fighting. Although Israel sent out thousands of cell phone messages urging residents of Gaza to leave houses where weapons may be stored, in an attempt to minimize civilian casualties, some residents complained there was nowhere to go because many neighborhoods had received the same message. Israeli bombs landed close to civilian structures such as schools, and some alleged that Israel was deliberately targeting Palestinian civilians. Israel declared a unilateral ceasefire on January 17, 2009. Hamas responded the following day by announcing a one week ceasefire to give Israel time to withdraw its forces from the Gaza Strip. Israeli, Palestinian, and third party sources disagreed on the total casualty figures from the Gaza War, and the number of Palestinian casualties who were civilians. In November 2010, a senior Hamas official acknowledged that up to 300 fighters were killed and, in addition to them, between 200 and 300 fighters from the Al Qassam brigades and another 150 security forces were martyred. These new numbers reconcile the total with those of the Israeli military, which originally said were 709 terror operatives killed. Topic: <laughs> After the Gaza War. On August 16, 2009, Hamas leader Khalid Mashal stated that the organization is ready to open dialogue with the Obama administration because its policies are much better than those of former U.S. President George W. Bush. As long as there's a new language, we welcome it, but we want to see not only a change of language, but also a change of policies on the ground. We have said that we are prepared to cooperate with the U.S. or any other international party that would enable the Palestinians to get rid of occupation. Despite this, an August 30, 2009 speech during a visit to Jordan in which Mashal expressed support for the Palestinian right of return was interpreted by David Pollack of the Washington Institute for Near East Policy as a sign that Hamas has now clearly opted out of diplomacy. In an interview in May 2010, Mashal said that if a Palestinian state with real sovereignty was established under the conditions he set out, on the borders of 1967 with its capital Jerusalem and with the right of return, that will be the end of the Palestinian resistance, and then the nature of any subsequent ties with Israel would be decided democratically by the Palestinians. In July 2009, Khalid Mashal, Hamas's political bureau chief, stated Hamas's willingness to cooperate with a resolution to the Arab-Israeli conflict, which included a Palestinian state based on 1967 borders, provided that Palestinian refugees be given the right to return to Israel and that East Jerusalem be recognized as the new state's capital. In 2011, after the outbreak of the Syrian civil war, Hamas distanced itself from the Syrian regime and its members began leaving Syria, where once there were hundreds of exiled Palestinian officials and their relatives. That number shrunk to a few dozen. In 2012, Hamas publicly announced its support for the Syrian opposition. This prompted Syrian state TV to issue a withering attack on the Hamas leadership. Khalid Mashal said that Hamas had been forced out of Damascus because of its disagreements with the Syrian regime. In late October, Syrian army soldiers shot dead two Hamas leaders in Dara refugee camp. On November 5, 2012, the Syrian state security forces shut down all Hamas offices in the country. 
In January 2013, another two Hamas members were found dead in Syria's Husseini camp. Activists said the two had been arrested and executed by state security forces. In 2013, it was reported that the military wing of Hamas had begun training units of the Free Syrian Army. In 2013, after several intense weeks of indirect three-way diplomacy between representatives of Hamas, Israel, and the Palestinian Authority, no agreement was reached. Also, intra-Palestinian reconciliation talks stalled and, as a result, during Obama's visit to Israel, Hamas launched five rocket strikes on Israel. In November, ISRA Almodalal was appointed the first spokeswoman of the group. 2014 Israel–Gaza conflict On 8 July 2014 Israel launched Operation Protective Edge to counter increased Hamas rocket fire from Gaza. The conflict ended with a permanent ceasefire after seven weeks, and more than 2,200 dead. Sixty-four of the dead were Israeli soldiers, seven were civilians in Israel from rocket attacks, and 2,101 were killed in Gaza, of which according to UN OCHA at least 1,460 were civilians. Israel says 1,000 of the dead were militants. Following the conflict, Mahmoud Abbas president of the Palestinian Authority, accused Hamas of needlessly extending the fighting in the Gaza Strip, contributing to the high death toll, of running a shadow government in Gaza, and of illegally executing scores of Palestinians. Hamas has complained about the slow delivery of reconstruction materials after the conflict and announced that they were diverting these materials from civilian uses to build more infiltration tunnels. Topic. Reconciliation attempts In 2016, Hamas began security coordination with Egypt to crack down on Islamic terrorist organizations in Sinai, in return for economic aid. In May 2017, Hamas unveiled its new charter, in an attempt to moderate its image. The charter no longer calls for Israel's destruction, but still calls for liberation of Palestine and to confront the Zionist project. It also confirms acceptance of the 1967 borders as the basis for establishing a Palestinian state as well as not being an offshoot of the Muslim Brotherhood. In October 2017, Fatah and Hamas signed yet another reconciliation agreement. The partial agreement addresses civil and administrative matters involving Gaza and the West Bank. Other contentious issues such as national elections, reform of the Palestine Liberation Organization PLO, and possible demilitarization of Hamas were to be discussed in the next meeting in November 2017, due to a new step-by-step -step approach. <laughs> Media In 2005, Hamas announced its intention to launch an experimental TV channel, Al-Aqsa TV. The station was launched on January 7, 2006, less than three weeks before the Palestinian legislative elections. It has shown television programs, including some children's television, which deliver anti-Semitic messages. Hamas has stated that the television station is an independent media institution that often does not express the views of the Palestinian government headed by Ismail Haniya or of the Hamas movement, and that Hamas does not hold anti-Semitic views. Hamas produced several propaganda songs aimed to scare Israeli citizens including Shock Israel's Security and Go, Call a Gazan to Rip Givati. Topic. Children's magazine Al-Fateh, The Conqueror, is the Hamas children's magazine, published bi-weekly in London, and also posted in an online website. It began publication in September 2002, and its 108th issue was released in mid-September 2007. The magazine features stories, poems, riddles, and puzzles, and states it is for the young builders of the future. According to memory, three of whose seven founding staff had formerly served in the IDF, the magazine includes incitement to jihad and martyrdom and glorification of terrorist operations and of their planners and perpetrators, as well as characterizations of Jews as murderers of the prophets, and laudatory descriptions of parents who encourage their sons to kill Jews. In each issue, a regular feature titled, The Story of a Martyr, presents the heroic deeds of a mujahid from one of the organizations who died in a suicide operation, including operations against civilians, or who was killed by the IDF. 
Memory also noted that the magazine includes illustrations of figures, including child warriors, who embody the ethos of jihad and martyrdom, presenting them as role models. These include the magazine's titular character, Al Fateh, the Conqueror, a small boy on a horse brandishing a drawn scimitar, as well as children carrying guns, and photos of Hamas fighters launching Qassam rockets. Al Aqsa TV Al Aqsa TV is a television channel founded by Hamas. The station began broadcasting in the Gaza Strip on January 9, 2006. Its programming includes ideologically tinged children's shows, news talk, and religiously inspired entertainment. According to the Anti Defamation League, the station promotes terrorist activity and incites hatred of Jews and Israelis. Hamas has stated that the television station is an independent media institution that often does not express the views of the Palestinian government headed by Ismail Haniyeh or of the Hamas movement, and that Hamas does not hold anti-Semitic views. Al Aqsa TV is headed by Fathi Ahmad Hamad, chairman of Al Rebat Communications and Artistic Productions, a Hamas run company that also produces Hamas's radio station, Voice of Al Aqsa, and its bi weekly newspaper, The Message. <laughs> Islamization efforts <laughs> In the Gaza Strip The gender ideology outlined in the Hamas Charter, the importance of women in the religious nationalist project of liberation is asserted, while defining that role as one of manufacturing males and caring for their upbringing and rearing. This is not so different from Fatah's view of women in the First Intifada and it also resembles the outlook of Jewish settlers, and over time it has been subjected to change. In 1989, during the First Intifada, a small number of Hamas followers campaigned for the wearing of the hijab, which is not a part of traditional women's attire in Palestine, for polygamy, and also insisted women stay at home and be segregated from men. In the course of this campaign, women who chose not to wear the hijab were verbally and physically harassed, with the result that the hijab was being worn just to avoid problems on the streets. The harassment dropped drastically when, after 18 months UNLU condemned it, though similar campaigns reoccurred. Since Hamas took control of the Gaza Strip in 2007, some of its members have attempted to impose Islamic dress or the hijab head covering on women. Also, the government's Islamic Endowment Ministry has deployed Virtue Committee members to warn citizens of the dangers of immodest dress, card playing, and dating. However, there are no government laws imposing dress and other moral standards, and the Hamas Education Ministry reversed one effort to impose Islamic dress on students. There has also been successful resistance to attempts by local Hamas officials to impose Islamic dress on women. Hamas officials deny having any plans to impose Islamic law, one legislator stating that, What you are seeing are incidents, not policy, and that Islamic law is the desired standard. But we believe in persuasion. The Hamas Education Ministry reversed one effort to impose Islamic dress on students. When the BBC in 2010 interviewed five, Middle class women in Gaza City, the subjects generally indicated Hamas attempts to enforce conservative religious standards of dress had been largely rejected by the local population, with some expressing concern that the closure of Gaza would allow the proliferation of extremist enforcement attempts by low level Hamas officials, and others indicating they were happy to see Hamas enforcing such requirements. They also cited examples of leniency by Hamas authorities, such as allowing widowed women to keep custody of their children so long as they did not remarry, and other relaxations in the enforcement of Sharia law. One woman noted that the environment was not as bad as during the first intifada, when women were subject to public criticism and stonings for failure to obey conservative Islamic standards of dress. One woman complained that women were not free to speak their minds or travel alone, and added, Hamas want to force themselves onto the people. They want the people to submit to them, this is their cover. They destroyed the reputation of Islam, by saying we're doing this because it is religion. This is how they won the elections." In 2013, UNRWA cancelled its annual marathon in Gaza after Hamas rulers prohibited women from participating in the race. In the West Bank In 2005, the human rights organization Freemuse released a report titled, 
Palestine, Taliban like attempts to censor music, which said that Palestinian musicians feared that harsh religious laws against music and concerts will be imposed since Hamas group scored political gains in the Palestinian Authority local elections of 2005. The attempt by Hamas to dictate a cultural code of conduct in the 1980s and early 1990s led to a violent fighting between different Palestinian sectors. Hamas members reportedly burned down stores that stocked videos they deemed indecent and destroyed books they described as heretical. In 2005, an outdoor music and dance performance in Kalkalia were suddenly banned by the Hamas led municipality, for the reason that such an event would be forbidden by Islam, or haram. The municipality also ordered that music no longer be played in the Kalkalia Zoo, and Mufti Akrame Sabri issued a religious edict affirming the municipality decision. In response, the Palestinian national poet Mahmoud Darwish warned that, "...there are Taliban-type elements in our society, and this is a very dangerous sign." The Palestinian columnist Muhammad Abd al-Hamid, a resident of Ramallah, wrote that this religious coercion could cause the migration of artists, and said, "...the religious fanatics in Algeria destroyed every cultural symbol, shattered statues and rare works of art and liquidated intellectuals and artists, reporters and authors, ballet dancers and singers, are we going to imitate the Algerian and Afghani examples?" Tayyip Erdogan's Turkey as a role model Some Hamas members stated that the model of Islamic government that Hamas seeks to emulate is that of Turkey under the rule of Tayyip Erdogan. The foremost members to distance Hamas from the practices of Taliban and to publicly support the Erdogan model were Ahmad Yusuf and Ghazi Hamid, advisors to Prime Minister Haniya. Yusuf, the Hamas deputy foreign minister, reflected this goal in an interview to a Turkish newspaper, stating that while foreign public opinion equates Hamas with the Taliban or Al-Qaeda, the analogy is inaccurate. Yusuf described the Taliban as, "...opposed to everything," including education and women's rights, while Hamas wants to establish good relations between the religious and secular elements of society and strives for human rights, democracy and an open society. According to Professor Yezid Sayai of the King's College in London, how influential this view is within Hamas is uncertain, since both Ahmad Yusuf and Ghazi Hamid were dismissed from their posts as advisors to Hamas Prime Minister Ismail Haniyeh in October 2007. Both have since been appointed to other prominent positions within the Hamas government. Khalid al Rub of the West Bank based and anti Hamas Palestinian daily Al Ayam added that despite claims by Hamas leaders that it wants to repeat the Turkish model of Islam, what is happening on the ground in reality is a replica of the Taliban model of Islam. Antisemitism and anti-Zionism According to academic Esther Webman, antisemitism is not the main tenet of Hamas ideology, although antisemitic rhetoric is frequent and intense in Hamas leaflets. The leaflets generally do not differentiate between Jews and Zionists. In other Hamas publications and interviews with its leaders, attempts at this differentiation have been made. In 2009 representatives of the small Jewish sect Netare Karta met with Hamas leader Ismail Haniyeh in Gaza, who stated that he held nothing against Jews but only against the State of Israel. Some commentators have pointed out parallels between Hamas's youth organization and Hitler Youth. According to writer Tom Doran, Hamas is not recognized as a neo-Nazi group because its members are not white Christians. Hamas has made conflicting statements about its readiness to recognize Israel. In 2006 a spokesman signaled readiness to recognize Israel within the 1967 borders. Speaking of requests for Hamas to recognize agreements between the Palestinian Authority and Israel, senior Hamas member Khalid Suleiman said that, "...these agreements are a reality which we view as such, and therefore I see no problem." Also in 2006, a Hamas official ruled out recognition of Israel with reference to West and East Germany, which never recognized each other. Topic: <laughs> Hamas Charter 1988. Article 7 of the Hamas Covenant provides the following quotation, attributed to Muhammad, the day of judgment will not come about until Muslims fight the Jews, killing the Jews, when the Jew will hide behind stones and trees. The stones and trees will say O Muslims, O Abdullah, there is a Jew behind me, come and kill him. 
Only the Garkad tree, evidently a certain kind of tree, would not do that because it is one of the trees of the Jews. Article 22 states that the French Revolution, the Russian Revolution, colonialism and both world wars were created by the Zionists or forces supportive of Zionism. You may speak as much as you want about regional and world wars. They were behind World War I, when they were able to destroy the Islamic Caliphate, making financial gains and controlling resources. They obtained the Balfour Declaration, formed the League of Nations through which they could rule the world. They were behind World War II, through which they made huge financial gains by trading in armaments, and paved the way for the establishment of their state. It was they who instigated the replacement of the League of Nations with the United Nations and the Security Council to enable them to rule the world through them. There is no war going on anywhere, without having their finger in it. Article 32 of the Covenant refers to an anti-Semitic forgery, the Protocols of the Elders of Zion, today it is Palestine, tomorrow it will be one country or another. The Zionist plan is limitless. After Palestine, the Zionists aspire to expand from the Nile to the Euphrates. When they will have digested the region they overtook, they will aspire to further expansion, and so on. Their plan is embodied in the Protocols of the Elders of Zion, and their present conduct is the best proof of what we are saying. Topic. Statements by Hamas members and clerics to an Arab audience In 2008, Imam Yusuf al-Zahar of Hamas said in his sermon at the Khatib Wilayat Mosque in Gaza that, "...Jews are a people who cannot be trusted. They have been traitors to all agreements. Go back to history. Their fate is their vanishing." Another Hamas legislator and Imam, Sheikh Yunus al-Astal, discussed a Quranic verse suggesting that, Suffering by fire is the Jews' destiny in this world and the next. He concluded, Therefore we are sure that the Holocaust is still to come upon the Jews. Following the rededication of the Herva Synagogue in Jerusalem in March 2010, senior Hamas figure Al-Zahar called on Palestinians everywhere to observe five minutes of silence for Israel's disappearance and to identify with Jerusalem and the Al-Aqsa Mosque. He further stated that Wherever you have been you've been sent to your destruction. You've killed and murdered your prophets and you have always dealt in loan sharking and destruction. You've made a deal with the devil and with destruction itself, just like your synagogue." On August 10, 2012, Ahmad Bar, deputy speaker of the Hamas parliament, stated in a sermon that aired on Al-Aqsa TV, if the enemy sets foot on a single square inch of Islamic land, jihad becomes an individual duty, incumbent on every Muslim, male or female. A woman may set out on jihad without her husband's permission, and a servant without his master's permission. Why? In order to annihilate those Jews. O oh Allah, destroy the Jews and their supporters. O oh Allah, destroy the Americans and their supporters. O oh Allah, count them one by one, and kill them all, without leaving a single one. In an interview with Al-Aqsa TV on September 12, 2012, Marwan Abu Ras, a Hamas MP, who is also a member of the International Union of Muslim Scholars, stated as translated by memory, The Jews are behind each and every catastrophe on the face of the earth. This is not open to debate. This is not a temporal thing, but goes back to days of yore. They concocted so many conspiracies and betrayed rulers and nations so many times that the people harbor hatred towards them. Throughout history, from Nebuchadnezzar until modern times. They slayed the prophets, and so on. Any catastrophe on the face of this earth, the Jews must be behind it. On December 26, 2012, senior Hamas official and Jerusalem bureau chief Ahmed Abu Haliba, called on all Palestinian factions to resume suicide attacks deep inside the Zionist enemy, and said that we must renew the resistance to occupation in any possible way, above all through armed resistance." Abu Haliba suggested the use of suicide bombings as a response to Israel's plans to build housing units in East Jerusalem and the West Bank. In an interview on Lebanese television on July 28, 2014, Hamas spokesman Osama Hamdan repeated the blood libel myth, We all remember how the Jews used to slaughter Christians, in order to mix their blood in their holy matzos. It happened everywhere. Topic. Statements by Hamas members and clerics to an international audience 
In an interview with CBS This Morning on July 27, 2014, Hamas leader Khalid Meshal stated, We are not fanatics. We are not fundamentalists. We are not actually fighting the Jews because they are Jews per se. We do not fight any other races. We fight the occupiers. On January 8, 2012, during a visit to Tunis, Gazan Hamas PM Ismail Haniyeh told the Associated Press on that he disagrees with the anti-Semitic slogans, We are not against the Jews because they are Jews. Our problem is with those occupying the land of Palestine. He said, There are Jews all over the world, but Hamas does not target them. In response to a statement by Palestinian Authority leader Mahmoud Abbas that Hamas preferred nonviolent means and had agreed to adopt peaceful resistance. Hamas contradicted Abbas. According to Hamas spokesman Sami Abu Zuri, we had agreed to give popular resistance precedence in the West Bank, but this does not come at the expense of armed resistance. In May 2009, senior Hamas MP Sayed Abu Musame said, in our culture, we respect every foreigner, especially Jews and Christians, but we are against Zionists, not as nationalists but as fascists and racists. In the same interview, he also said, I hate all kinds of weapons. I dream of seeing every weapon from the atomic bomb to small guns banned everywhere. In January 2009, Gazan Hamas Health Minister Basim Naim published a letter in The Guardian, stating that Hamas has no quarrel with Jewish people, only with the actions of Israel. In October 1994, in a response to Israel's crackdown on Hamas militants following a suicide bombing on a Tel Aviv bus, Hamas promised retaliation. Rabin must know that Hamas loves death more than Rabin and his soldiers love life. Topic. Statements on the Holocaust Hamas has been explicit in its Holocaust denial. In reaction to the Stockholm Conference on the Jewish Holocaust, held in late January 2000, Hamas issued a press release that it published on its official website, containing the following statements from a senior leader. This conference bears a clear Zionist goal, aimed at forging history by hiding the truth about the so-called Holocaust, which is an alleged and invented story with no basis. The invention of these grand illusions of an alleged crime that never occurred, ignoring the millions of dead European victims of Nazism during the war, clearly reveals the racist Zionist face, which believes in the superiority of the Jewish race over the rest of the nations. By these methods, the Jews in the world flout scientific methods of research whenever that research contradicts their racist interests. In August 2003, senior Hamas official Dr. Abd al-Aziz al-Rantisi wrote in the Hamas newspaper Al-Rizala that the Zionists encouraged murder of Jews by the Nazis with the aim of forcing them to immigrate to Palestine. In 2005, Khalid Mashal called Mahmoud Ermadinejad's December 14, 2005 statements on the Holocaust that Europeans had created a myth in the name of Holocaust, as courageous. Later in 2008, Basim Naim, the Minister of Health in the Hamas-led Palestinian Authority government in Gaza countered Holocaust denial, and said, it should be made clear that neither Hamas nor the Palestinian government in Gaza denies the Nazi Holocaust. The Holocaust was not only a crime against humanity but one of the most abhorrent crimes in modern history. We condemn it as we condemn every abuse of humanity and all forms of discrimination on the basis of religion, race, gender or nationality." In an open letter to Gaza Strip UNRWA chief John Jing published August 20, 2009, the movement's popular committees for refugees called the Holocaust, "...a lie invented by the Zionists," adding that the group refused to let Gazan children study it. Hamas leader Yunus al-Astal continued by saying that having the Holocaust included in the UNRWA curriculum for Gaza students amounted to marketing a lie and spreading it. Al-Astal continued, I do not exaggerate when I say this issue is a war crime, because of how it serves the Zionist colonizers and deals with their hypocrisy and lies. In February 2011, Hamas voiced opposition to UNRWA's teaching of the Holocaust in Gaza. According to Hamas, Holocaust studies in refugee camps is a contemptible plot and serves the Zionist entity with a goal of creating a reality and telling stories in order to justify acts of slaughter against the Palestinian people. 
In July 2012, Fazi Barham, a Hamas spokesman, denounced a visit by Ziad al-Bandak, an advisor to Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas, to the Auschwitz death camp, saying it was unjustified and unhelpful, and only served the Zionist occupation, while coming at the expense of a real Palestinian tragedy. He also called the Holocaust an alleged tragedy and exaggerated. In October 2012, Hamas said that they were opposed to teaching about the Holocaust in Gaza Strip schools run by the UN Relief and Works Agency. The Refugee Affairs Department of Hamas said that teaching the Holocaust was a crime against the issue of the refugees that is aimed at cancelling their right of return. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Violence and Terrorism. Hamas has used both political activities and violence in pursuit of its goals. For example, while politically engaged in the 2006 Palestinian Territories parliamentary election campaign, Hamas stated in its election manifesto that it was prepared to use armed resistance to end the occupation. From 2000 to 2004, Hamas was responsible for killing nearly 400 Israelis and wounding more than 2,000 in 425 attacks, according to the Israeli Ministry of Foreign Affairs. From 2001 through May 2008, Hamas launched more than 3,000 Qassam rockets and 2,500 mortar attacks into Israel. Topic. Attacks on civilians In the first years of the First Intifada (1987–1993), Hamas violence was directed first at collaborators with Israel and at individuals it considered moral deviants, and then later at the Israeli military. A new direction began with the formation of the Al Qassam Brigades Militia in 1992, and in 1993, suicide attacks began against Israeli targets on the West Bank. The first such attack occurred on April 16, 1993, when an Al Qassam Brigades operative detonated explosives in a car he parked next to two buses, one military and one civilian, in the West Bank town of Mahala, killing a Palestinian civilian and wounding eight Israeli soldiers. After the February 1994 massacre by Baruch Goldstein of 30 Muslim civilians in a Hebron mosque, the Al Qassam Brigades expanded suicide attacks to target primarily civilians. The first of the suicide bombings that targeted civilians was at Afula on April 16, 1994, when a suicide bomber detonated an explosives-laden car next to a bus, killing nine including the bomber and wounding 50. The most deadly suicide bombing was an attack on a Netanya hotel on March 27, 2002, in which 30 people were killed and 140 were wounded. The attack has also been referred to as the Passover Massacre since it took place on the first night of the Jewish festival of Passover at a Seder. Hamas has defended suicide attacks as a legitimate aspect of its asymmetric warfare against Israel. In 2003, according to Stephen Atkins, Hamas resumed suicide bombings in Israel as a retaliatory measure after the failure of peace talks and an Israeli campaign targeting members of the upper echelon of the Hamas leadership, but they are considered as crimes against humanity under international law. In a 2002 report, Human Rights Watch stated that Hamas leaders should be held accountable for war crimes and crimes against humanity committed by the Al Qassam Brigades. In May 2006 Israel arrested a top Hamas official, Ibrahim Hamd, who Israeli security officials alleged was responsible for dozens of suicide bombings and other attacks on Israelis. Hamd's trial on those charges has not yet concluded. In 2008, Hamas explosives engineer Shihab al natche organized a deadly suicide bombing in Dimona. Since 2002, paramilitary soldiers of al Qassam brigades and other groups have used homemade Qassam rockets to hit Israeli towns in the Negev, such as Dero. Al Qassam brigades was estimated in 2007 to have launched 22% of the rocket and mortar attacks, which killed 15 people between the years 2000 and 2009. See Palestinian rocket attacks on Israel. The introduction of the Qassam II rocket in 2008 enabled Palestinian paramilitary groups to reach from Gaza, such Israeli cities such as Ashkelon. In 2008, Hamas leader Khalid Mashal offered that Hamas would attack only military targets if the IDF would stop causing the deaths of Palestinian civilians. 
Following a June 19, 2008 ceasefire, the Al Qassam brigades ended its rocket attacks and arrested Fatah militants in Gaza who had continued sporadic rocket and mortar attacks against Israel. The Al Qassam brigades resumed the attacks after the November 4 Israeli incursion into Gaza. On 15 June 2014, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu accused Hamas of involvement in the kidnapping of three Israeli teenagers, including one who held American citizenship, saying, this has severe repercussions. On 20 July 2014, nearly two weeks into Operation Protective Edge, Netanyahu in an interview with CNN described Hamas as genocidal terrorists. On 5 August 2014 Israel announced that Israeli security forces arrested Hussam Khawazmi, in Shuafat, in connection with the murders. During interrogation, Khawazmi admitted to being the mastermind behind the attack, in addition to securing the funding from Hamas. Officials have stated that additional people arrested in connection with the murders are still being held, but no names have been released. On the 20th of August, Salah Al Aruri, a Hamas leader in exile in Turkey, claimed responsibility for the kidnapping of the three Israeli teens. He delivered an address on behalf of Khalid Mashal at the conference of the International Union of Muslim Scholars in Istanbul, a move that might reflect a desire by Hamas to gain leverage. In it, he said. Our goal was to ignite an intifada in the West Bank and Jerusalem, as well as within the 1948 borders. Your brothers in the Al Qassam brigades carried out this operation to support their imprisoned brothers, who were on a hunger strike. The Mujahideen captured these settlers in order to have a swap deal. Hamas political leader Khalid Mashal accepted that members of Hamas were responsible, stating that he knew nothing of it in advance and that what the leadership knew of the details came from reading Israeli reports. Mashal, who has headed Hamas's exiled political wing since 2004, has denied being involved in the details of Hamas military issues, but justified the killings as a legitimate action against Israelis on occupied lands. Hamas suicide attacks on Israeli civilians have largely disappeared since 2005, this has coincided with an increase in rocket attacks. One analysis suggests that the decline in suicide attacks is not motivated by any lack of supplies or volunteers to carry out such operations, by enhanced Israeli security measures such as the West Bank barrier. If Israeli actions were the reason, one would expect to see an equal decline in suicide attacks by all Palestinian factions, which is not observed, or by a newfound desire for reconciliation with Israel on the part of Hamas. Rather, suicide bombings provoked targeted killings that decimated the leadership of Hamas, whereas rocket attacks have elicited weaker Israeli reprisals that have tended to harm the Palestinian population as a whole more than Hamas, such as the blockade of the Gaza Strip, thereby paradoxically increasing Hamas's popular support. Topic: <laughs> Rocket attacks on Israel. Rocket attacks by Hamas have been condemned by human rights organizations as war crimes, both because they usually take aim at civilians and because the weapons' inaccuracy would disproportionately endanger civilians even if military targets were chosen. After Operation Pillar of Defense, Human Rights Watch stated that armed Palestinian groups fired hundreds of rockets at Israeli cities, violating international humanitarian law, and that statements by Palestinian groups that they deliberately targeted Israeli civilians demonstrated an intent to commit war crimes." HRW's Middle East director Sarah Leah Whitson said that Palestinian groups made clear that "...harming civilians was their aim," and said that launching rockets at populated areas had no legal justification. International humanitarian law prohibits deliberate attacks on civilians and intentional violations can be war crimes. According to Human Rights Watch, Hamas and other Palestinian armed groups have launched thousands of rockets into Israel since 2001, killing 15 civilians, wounding many more, and posing an ongoing threat to the nearly 800,000 Israeli civilians who live and work in the weapons range. Hamas officials have said that the rockets were aimed only at military targets, saying that civilian casualties were the accidental result of the weapon's poor quality. According to Human Rights Watch, statements by Hamas leaders suggest that the purpose of the rocket attacks was indeed to strike civilians and civilian objects. From January 2009, following Operation Cast Lead, Hamas largely stopped launching rocket attacks on Israel and has on at least two occasions arrested members of other groups who have launched rockets. 
showing that it has the ability to impose the law when it wants." In February 2010, Hamas issued a statement regretting any harm that may have befallen Israeli civilians as a result of Palestinian rocket attacks during the Gaza War. It maintained that its rocket attacks had been aimed at Israeli military targets but lacked accuracy and hence sometimes hit civilian areas. Israel responded that Hamas had boasted repeatedly of targeting and murdering civilians in the media, according to one report, commenting on the 2014 conflict. Nearly all the 2,500 to 3,000 rockets and mortars Hamas has fired at Israel since the start of the war seem to have been aimed at towns, including an attack on a kibbutz collective farm close to the Gaza border, in which an Israeli child was killed. Former Israeli lieutenant Col. Jonathan D. Halevi stated that, Hamas has expressed pride in aiming long range rockets at strategic targets in Israel, including the nuclear reactor in Dimona, the chemical plants in Haifa, and Ben Gurion Airport, which could have caused thousands of Israeli casualties, if successful. In July 2008, Barack Obama, then the Democratic presidential candidate, said, if somebody was sending rockets into my house, where my two daughters sleep at night, I'm going to do everything in my power to stop that, and I would expect Israelis to do the same thing." On December 28, 2008, Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice said in a statement, "...the United States strongly condemns the repeated rocket and mortar attacks against Israel." On March 2, 2009, Secretary of State Hillary Clinton condemned the attacks. Topic. Attempts to derail 2010 peace talks In 2010, Hamas, who have been actively sidelined from the peace talks by Israel, spearheaded a coordinated effort by 13 Palestinian militant groups, in attempt to derail the stalled peace talks between Israel and Mahmoud Abbas, president of the Palestinian Authority. According to the Israeli coordinator of government activities in the territory's major gen. Even Dango, Israel seeks to work with Salam Fayyad, to help revive the Palestinian economy, and hopes to ease restrictions on the Gaza Strip further, while somehow preventing the Islamic militants who rule it from getting credit for any progress. According to Dango, Hamas must not be seen as ruling successfully or be allowed to get credit for a policy that would improve the lives of people. The campaign consists of attacks against Israelis in which, according to a Hamas declaration in early September, all options are open. The participating groups also include Palestinian Islamic Jihad, the Popular Resistance Committees, and an unnamed splinter group of Fatah. As part of the campaign, on August 31, 2010, four Israeli settlers, including a pregnant woman, were killed by Hamas militants while driving on Route 60 near the settlement Kiryat Arba, in the West Bank. According to witnesses, militants opened fire on the moving vehicle, but then approached the car and shot the occupants in their seats at close range. The attack was described by Israeli sources as one of the worst terrorist acts in years. A senior Hamas official said that Israeli settlers in the West Bank are legitimate targets since they are an army in every sense of the word. Topic. Themes of martyrdom According to a translation by Palestinian Media Watch, in 2008, Fathi Hamid, a member of the Palestinian Legislative Council, stated on Al Aqsa TV, For the Palestinian people, death became an industry, at which women excel and so do all people on this land, the elderly excel, the jihad fighters excel, and the children excel. Accordingly, Palestinians created a human shield of women, children, the elderly and the jihad fighters against the Zionist bombing machine, as if they were saying to the Zionist enemy, we desire death as you desire life. In 2010, Hamas speaker Ahmad Bar praised the virtues of martyrdom and jihad, and said that 2.5 million black-eyed virgins were waiting in the Garden of Eden, which could be entered only by prophets, by the righteous, and by martyrs. He continued by saying that nobody on earth will be able to confront the resistance, or to confront the Mujahideen, those who worship Allah and seek martyrdom. Guerrilla <inaudible> <inaudible> warfare Hamas has made great use of guerrilla tactics in the Gaza Strip and to a lesser degree the West Bank. 
It has successfully adapted these techniques over the years since its inception. According to a 2006 report by rival Fatah Party, Hamas had smuggled between several hundred and 1,300 tons of advanced rockets, along with other weaponry, into Gaza. Hamas has used IEDs and anti tank rockets against the IDF in Gaza. The latter include standard RPG 7 warheads and home made rockets such as the Al Banna, Al Batar, and Al Yassin. The IDF has a difficult, if not impossible time trying to find hidden weapons caches in Palestinian areas, this is due to the high local support base Hamas enjoys. <inaudible> <inaudible> Extrajudicial killings of rivals In addition to killing Israeli civilians and armed forces, Hamas has also murdered suspected Palestinian-Israel collaborators and Fatah rivals. Hundreds of Palestinians were executed by both Hamas and Fatah during the First Intifada. In the wake of the 2006 Israeli conflict with Gaza, Hamas was accused of systematically rounding up, torturing and summarily executing Fatah supporters suspected of supplying information to Israel. Human Rights Watch estimates several hundred Gazans were maimed and tortured in the aftermath of the conflict. Seventy-three Gazan men accused of collaborating had their arms and legs broken by unidentified perpetrators, and 18 Palestinians accused of helping Israel were executed by Hamas security officials in the first days of the conflict. In November 2012, Hamas's Izzedine al-Qassam brigade publicly executed six Gaza residents accused of collaborating with Israel. According to the witnesses, six alleged informers were shot dead one by one in Gaza City, while the corpse of the sixth victim was tied by a cable to the back of a motorcycle and dragged through the streets. In 2013, Human Rights Watch issued a statement condemning Hamas for not investigating and giving a proper trial to the six men. Their statement was released the day before Hamas issued a deadline for collaborators to turn themselves in, or they will be pursued without mercy. In August 2014, during the 2014 Israel-Gaza conflict, at least 22 accused collaborators were executed by Hamas shortly after three of its commanders were assassinated by Israeli forces. An Israeli source denied that any of the commanders had been targeted on the basis of human intelligence. Frequent killings of unarmed people have also occurred during Hamas Fatah clashes. NGOs have cited a number of summary executions as particular examples of violations of the rules of warfare, including the case of Mohamed Swayerki, 28, a cook for Palestinian Authority Chairman Mahmoud Abbas's presidential guard, who was thrown to his death, with his hands and legs tied, from a 15 story apartment building in Gaza City. Hamas security forces reportedly shoot and torture Palestinians who opposed Hamas rule in Gaza. In one case, a Palestinian had criticized Hamas in a conversation on the street with some friends. Later that day, more than a dozen armed men with black masks and red kafia took the man from his home, and brought him to a solitary area where they shot him three times in the lower legs and ankles. The man told Human Rights Watch that he was not politically active. On August 14, 2009, Hamas fighters stormed the mosque of cleric Abdul Latif Musa. The cleric was protected by at least 100 fighters from Jund Ansar Allah, Army of the Helpers of God, an Islamist group with links to Al Qaeda. The resulting battle left at least 13 people dead, including Musa and six Hamas fighters, and 120 people injured. According to Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas, during 2014 Israel-Gaza conflict, Hamas killed more than 120 Palestinian youths for defying house arrest imposed on them by Hamas, in addition to 30 to 40 Palestinians killed by Hamas in extrajudicial executions after accusing them of being collaborators with Israel. Referring to the killing of suspected collaborators, a Shin Bet official stated that, not even one. Of those executed by Hamas provided any intelligence to Israel, while the Shin Bet officially confirmed that those executed during Operation Protective Edge had all been held in prison in Gaza in the course of the hostilities. 2011-2013 Sinai insurgency Hamas has been accused of providing weapons, training and fighters for Sinai-based insurgent attacks, although Hamas strongly denies the allegations, calling them a smear campaign aiming to harm relations with Egypt. According to the Egyptian army, since the ouster of Egypt's Muslim Brotherhood President Mohamed Morsi, over 600 Hamas members have entered the Sinai Peninsula through smuggling tunnels. 
In addition, several weapons used in Sinai's insurgent attacks are being traced back to Hamas in the Gaza Strip, according to the army. The four leading insurgent groups in the Sinai have all reportedly maintained close ties with the Gaza Strip. Hamas is also accused of helping Morsi and other high-ranking Egyptian Muslim Brotherhood members break out of the Wadi Natrun prison in Cairo during the 2011 revolution. Hamas called the accusation a dangerous development. Egyptian authorities stated that the 2011 Alexandria bombing was carried out by the Gaza-based Army of Islam, which has received sanctuary from Hamas and earlier collaborated in the capture of Gilad Shalit. Army of Islam members linked to the August 2012 Sinai attack have reportedly sought refuge in the Gaza Strip. Egypt stated that Hamas directly provided logistical support to the Muslim Brotherhood militants who carried out the December 2013 Mansoura bombing. Topic. International designations as a terrorist organization Hamas, together with several charities it runs, has been designated by several governments and some academics as a terrorist organization. Others regard Hamas as a complex organization with terrorism as only one component. Israel outlawed Hamas in September 1989 The United States followed suit in 1995, as did Canada in November 2002. The European Union outlawed Hamas's military wing in 2001 and included Hamas in its list of terrorist organizations in 2003, which Hamas successfully challenged in the courts, and continued to do so under American and Israeli pressure. The basis of Hamas's challenge to the EU classification in 2007 was that it was drawn up on the basis of media reports, rather than grounded in any analysis of Hamas's history. In July 2017, the European Court of Justice overruled this challenge, citing that the evidence of media reports was only used for keeping Hamas on the list, rather than to add it to the list in the first place. The European General Court found in favor of Hamas in 2014, though the verdict was appealed by the EU countries. In September 2016 a legal advisor to the European Court of Justice, Eleanor Sharpston, provided an advisory opinion, in favor of cancelling the listing of Hamas as a terrorist organization. She argued that the determination originally adopted was flawed, and that the EU cannot rely on facts and evidence found in press articles and information from the Internet in order to list organizations as terrorists. Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Japan, New Zealand, Australia and the United Kingdom have designated the military wing of Hamas as a terrorist organization. The organization is banned in Jordan. It is not regarded as a terrorist organization by Iran, Russia, Norway, Switzerland, Turkey, China, and Brazil. Topic. Criticism Topic. Human shields After Operation Pillar of Defense, Human Rights Watch stated that Palestinian groups had endangered civilians by repeatedly fired rockets from densely populated areas, near homes, businesses, and a hotel," and noted that under international law, parties to a conflict may not to place military targets in or near densely populated areas. One rocket was launched close to the Shawa and Husari building, where various Palestinian and international media have offices, another was fired from the yard of a house near the Deira Hotel. The New York Times journalist Stephen Erlanger reported that Hamas rocket and weapons caches, including rocket launchers, have been discovered in and under mosques, schools and civilian homes. Quote, Another report published by Intelligence and Terrorism Information Center revealed that Hamas used close to 100 mosques to store weapons and as launch pads to shoot rockets. The report contains testimony from variety Palestinian sources, including a Hamas militant Sabi Majad Ader, who said he was taught how to shoot rockets from inside a mosque. Hamas has also been criticized by Israeli officials for blending into or hiding among the Palestinian civilian population during the 2008–2009 Israel–Gaza conflict. The Israeli government published what it said was video evidence of human shield tactics by Hamas. Israel said that Hamas frequently used mosques and school yards as hideouts and places to store weapons, and that Hamas militants stored weapons in their homes, making it difficult to ensure that civilians close to legitimate military targets are not hurt during Israeli military operations. 
Israeli officials also accused the Hamas leadership of hiding under Shifa hospital during the conflict, using the patients inside to deter an Israeli attack. The Israeli government filed a report entitled Gaza Operations Investigation, Second Update, to the United Nations accusing Hamas of exploiting its rules of engagement by shooting rockets and launching attacks within protected civilian areas. Israel says 12,000 rockets and mortars were fired at it between 2000 and 2008 nearly 3,000 in 2008 alone. In one case, an errant Israeli mortar strike killed dozens of people near a UN school. Hamas said that the mortar killed 42 people and left dozens wounded. Israel said that Hamas militants had launched a rocket from a yard adjacent to the school and one mortar of three rounds hit the school, due to a GPS error. According to the Israeli military probe, the remaining two rounds hit the yard used to launch rockets into Israel, killing two members of Hamas's military wing who fired the rockets. Human Right Watch called Hamas to publicly renounce the rocket attacks against Israeli civilians and hold those responsible to account. Human Right Watch program director Ian Levine said the attacks by Hamas were unlawful and unjustifiable, and amount to war crimes, and accused Hamas of putting Palestinians at risk by launching attacks from built-up areas. Hamas spokesman relied that the report was biased. And he denied that Hamas uses human shields. Human Rights Watch investigated 19 incidents involving 53 civilian deaths in Gaza that Israel said were the result of Hamas fighting in densely populated areas and did not find evidence for existence of Palestinian fighters in the areas at the time of the Israeli attack. In other cases where no civilians had died, the report concluded that Hamas may have deliberately fired rockets from areas close to civilians. HRW also investigated 11 deaths that Israel said were civilians being used as human shields by Hamas. HRW found no evidence that the civilians were used as human shields, nor had they been shot in crossfire. The Israeli human shields charge against Hamas was called full of holes by the National UAE, which stated that only Israel accused Hamas of using human shields during the conflict, though Hamas may be guilty of locating military objectives within or near densely populated areas, and for deliberately firing indiscriminate weapons into civilian populated areas. On July 8, 2014, Hamas's spokesman Sami Abu Zuri encouraged the policy of people confronting the Israeli warplanes with their bare chests, saying it has proven itself. One survey of Gazan residents addressed the subject of human shields during the 2014 war, with respondents issuing statements such as People received warnings from the Israelis and tried to evacuate. Hamas shot some of those people. The rest were forced to return to their homes and get bombed. Hamas imposed a curfew, anyone walking out in the street was shot without being asked any questions. That way Hamas made sure people had to stay in their homes even if they were about to get bombed. And my father received a text message from the Israeli army warning him that our area was going to be bombed, and Hamas prevented us from leaving. Israeli soldiers recounted. Suddenly, a small boy appeared, and the terrorist grabbed him and escaped with him. Quote semicolon quote. I saw with my own eyes someone using another person, a woman, as a shield and I can see very clearly that the woman doesn't want to be there and he's pulling her with him. And we even found explosives in nurseries. The whole neighborhood was practically a terrorist base. Israel has accused Hamas of using children as human shields. The Israeli government released video footage in which it claims two militants are shown grabbing a young boy's arm from behind holding him to walk in front of them toward a group of people waiting near a wall. The IDF argues the militants were placing the boy between themselves and an Israeli sniper. The second scene shows an individual, described as a terrorist, grabbing a school boy off of a floor, where he is hiding behind a column from IDF fire, and using him as a human shield to walk to a different location. 
After 15 alleged militants sought refuge in a mosque from Israeli forces, the BBC reported that Hamas radio instructed local women to go the mosque to protect the militants. Israeli forces later opened fire and killed two women. In November 2006, the Israeli Air Force warned Mohammed Weil Baroud, commander of the Popular Resistance Committees who are accused of launching rockets into Israeli territory, to evacuate his home in a Jabalia refugee camp apartment block in advance of a planned Israeli airstrike. Baroud responded by calling for volunteers to protect the apartment block and nearby buildings and, according to the Jerusalem Post, hundreds of local residents, mostly women and children, responded. Israel suspended the airstrike. Israel termed the action an example of Hamas using human shields. In response to the incident, Hamas proclaimed, We won. From now on we will form human chains around every house threatened with demolition. In a November 22 press release, Human Rights Watch condemned Hamas, stating, "...there is no excuse for calling civilians to the scene of a planned attack. Whether or not the home is a legitimate military target, knowingly asking civilians to stand in harm's way is unlawful." Following criticism, Human Rights Watch issued a statement saying that their initial assessment of the situation was in error. They stated that, on the basis of available evidence, the home demolition was in fact an administrative act, viewed in the context of Israel's long-standing policy of punitive home demolitions, not a military act and thus would not fall within the purview of the law regulating hostilities during armed conflict, which had been the basis for their initial criticism of Hamas, when the UN-sponsored Goldstone Commission report on the Gaza War was commissioned in 2009, it stated that it found no evidence that Palestinian combatants mingled with the civilian population with the intention of shielding themselves from attack." Though they deemed credible reports that Palestinian militants were "...not always dressed in a way that distinguished them from civilians." Hamas MP Fathi Hamd stated that for the Palestinian people, death has become an industry, at which women excel. The elderly excel at this. And so do the children. This is why they have formed human shields of the women, the children." Quote, Following the release of the Goldstone Report, the former commander of the British forces in Afghanistan call. Richard Kemp was invited to testify at the UN Human Rights Council 12th Special Session that during Operation Cast led Israel encountered an enemy that deliberately positioned its military capability behind the human shield of the civilian population. Topic. Children as combatants The Israeli government released a video compiled mostly from Arab news sources showing Palestinian children under the age of 15 going through military training and carrying and firing arms. The video's narration explains that Hamas indoctrinates these child combatants and that Hamas operators send the children on missions from which they would not risk their own lives. According to the Israeli government, the children are used as spotters, to transport explosives and weapons, sent to play in areas to deter Israeli attacks and are sent unknowingly with explosive devices in their schoolbags to be blown up in the vicinity of Israelis. The United Nations defines the use of children for military purposes as a war crime and a form of slavery. See Military Use of Children Although Hamas admits to sponsoring summer schools to train teenagers in handling weapons they condemn attacks by children. Following the deaths of three teenagers during a 2002 attack on Netzarim in central Gaza, Hamas banned attacks by children and "...called on the teachers and religious leaders to spread the message of restraint among young boys." Hamas's use of child labor to build tunnels with which to attack Israel has also been criticized, with at least 160 children killed in the tunnels as of 2012. Topic. Political freedoms. Human rights groups and Gazans have accused the Hamas government in the Gaza Strip of restricting freedom of the press and forcefully suppressing dissent. Both foreign and Palestinian journalists report harassment and other measures taken against them. In September 2007 the Gaza Interior Ministry disbanded the Gaza Strip branch of the pro fata Union of Palestinian Journalists, a move criticized by Reporters Without Borders. In November of that year the Hamas government arrested a British journalist and for a time cancelled all press cards in Gaza. 
On February 8, 2008, Hamas banned distribution of the pro Fatah al Ayam newspaper, and closed its offices in the Gaza Strip because it ran a caricature that mocked legislators loyal to Hamas. The Gaza Strip Interior Ministry later issued an arrest warrant for the editor. More widely, in late August 2007, the group was accused in The Telegraph, a conservative British newspaper, of torturing, detaining, and firing on unarmed protesters who had objected to policies of the Hamas government. Also in late August, Palestinian health officials reported that the Hamas government had been shutting down Gaza clinics in retaliation for doctor strikes. The Hamas government confirmed the punitive measure against doctors because, in its view, they had incited other doctors to suspend services and go out on strike. In September 2007 the Hamas government banned public prayers, after Fatah supporters began holding worship sessions that quickly escalated into raucous protests against Hamas rule. Government security forces beat several gathering supporters and journalists. In October 2008, the Hamas government announced it would release all political prisoners in custody in Gaza. Several hours after the announcement, 17 Fatah members were released. On August 2, 2012, the International Federation of Journalists IFJ accused Hamas of harassing elected officials belong to the Palestinian Journalists Syndicate PJS in Gaza. The IFJ said that journalists' leaders in Gaza have faced a campaign of intimidation, as well as threats designed to force them to stop their union work. Some of these journalists are now facing charges of illegal activities and a travel ban, due to their refusal to give in to pressure. The IFJ said that these accusations are malicious and should be dropped immediately. The IFJ explained that the campaign against PJS members began in March 2012, after their election, and included a raid organized by Hamas supporters who took over the PJS offices in Gaza with the help of the security forces, and subsequently evicted the staff and elected officials. Other harassment includes the targeting of individuals who were bullied into stopping union work. The IFJ backed the PJS and called on Prime Minister Ismail Haniyeh to intervene to stop his officials' unwarranted interference in journalists' affairs." In November 2012, two Gazan journalists were prevented from leaving Gaza by Hamas. They were scheduled to participate in a conference in Cairo, Egypt. After being questioned by security forces, their passports were confiscated. In 2016 Reporters Without Borders condemned Hamas for censorship and for torturing journalists. Reporters Without Borders Secretary General Christophe Delwar said, as living conditions in the Gaza Strip are disastrous, Hamas wants to silence critics and does not hesitate to torture a journalist in order to control media coverage in its territory. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Human rights abuses. In June 2011, the Independent Commission for Human Rights based in Ramallah published a report whose findings included that the Palestinians in the West Bank and the Gaza Strip were subjected in 2010 to an almost systematic campaign of human rights abuses by the Palestinian Authority and Hamas, as well as by Israeli authorities, with the security forces belonging to the PA and Hamas being responsible for torture, arrests and arbitrary detentions. In 2012, the Human Rights Watch presented a 43-page long list of human rights violation committed by Hamas. Among actions attributed to Hamas the HRW report mentions beatings with metal clubs and rubber hoses, hanging of alleged collaborationists with Israel, and torture of 102 individuals. According to the report, Hamas also tortured civil society activists and peaceful protesters. Reflecting on the captivity of Gilad Shalit, the HRW report described it as cruel and inhuman. The report also slams Hamas for harassment of people based on so-called morality offenses and for media censorship. In a public statement Joe Stork, the deputy Middle East director of HRW claimed, After five years of Hamas rule in Gaza, its criminal justice system reeks of injustice, routinely violates detainees' rights and grants impunity to abusive security services. Hamas responded by denying charges and describing them as politically motivated. On May 26, 2015 Amnesty International released a report saying that Hamas carried out extrajudicial killings, abductions and arrests of Palestinians and used the Al-Shifa hospital to detain, interrogate and torture suspects during the Israel-Gaza conflict in 2014. 
It details the executions of at least 23 Palestinians accused of collaborating with Israel and torture of dozens of others. Many victims of torture were members of the rival Palestinian movement Fatah. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> International support. Hamas has always maintained leadership abroad. The movement is deliberately fragmented to ensure that Israel cannot kill its top political and military leaders. Hamas used to be strongly allied with both Iran and Syria. Iran gave Hamas an estimated $13-15 million in 2011 as well as access to long-range missiles. Hamas's political bureau was once located in the Syrian capital of Damascus before the start of the Syrian civil war. Relations between Hamas, Iran, and Syria began to turn cold when Hamas refused to back the government of Syrian President Bashar al-Assad. Instead, Hamas backed the Sunni rebels fighting against Assad. As a result, Iran cut funding to Hamas, and their terror proxy Hezbollah ordered Hamas members out of Lebanon. Hamas was then forced out of Syria. Since then, Iran and Hezbollah have tried to mend fences with Hamas. Hamas contacted Jordan and Sudan to see if either would open up its borders to its political bureau. But both countries refused, though they welcomed many Hamas members leaving Syria. In 2012 Hamas headquarters subsequently moved to Doha, Qatar, from 2012 to 2013. Under the leadership of Muslim Brotherhood President Mohamed Morsi, Hamas had the support of Egypt. However, when Morsi was removed from office, his replacement Abdul Fattah al-Sisi outlawed the Muslim Brotherhood and destroyed the tunnels Hamas built into Egypt. The United Arab Emirates and Saudi Arabia are likewise hostile to Hamas. Like Egypt, they designated the Brotherhood as a terrorist organization and Hamas was viewed as its Palestinian equivalent. <laughs> Qatar and Turkey According to Middle East experts, now Hamas has two firm allies, Qatar and Turkey. Both give Hamas public and financial assistance estimated to be in the hundreds of millions of dollars. Shashank Joshi, senior research fellow at the Royal United Services Institute, says that, Qatar also hosts Hamas's political bureau which includes Hamas leader Khalid Meshal. Meshal also visits Turkey frequently to meet with Turkish Prime Minister Recep Tayyip Erdogan. Erdogan has dedicated himself to breaking Hamas out of its political and economic seclusion. Last year on U.S. television Erdogan said, I don't see Hamas as a terror organization. Hamas is a political party. In 2007, Qatar was, with Turkey, the only country to back Hamas after the group ousted the Palestinian Authority from the Gaza Strip. The relationship between Hamas and Qatar strengthened in 2008 and 2009 when Khalid Meshal was invited to attend the Doha summit where he was seated next to the then Qatari Emir Hamid bin Khalifa Al Thani, who pledged $250 million to repair the damage caused by the Israel in the Israeli war on Gaza. These events caused Qatar to become the main player in the Palestinian issue. Qatar called Gaza's blockade unjust and immoral, which prompted the Hamas government in Gaza, including former Prime Minister Ismail Haniya, to thank Qatar for their unconditional support. Qatar then began regularly handing out political, material, humanitarian, and charitable support for Hamas. In 2012, Qatar's former Emir, Hamid bin Khalifa al Thani, became the first head of state to visit Gaza under Hamas rule. He pledged to raise $400 million for reconstruction. Some have argued that the money Qatar gives to reconstruct Palestine is an excuse to pour even more money into Hamas. Qatar's reason for funding Hamas, which is shared by Recep Tayyip Erdogan, is allegedly that Islamist groups are growing and will eventually play a role in the region, thus it is important for Qatar and Turkey to maintain ties. During the Arab Spring, for example, Qatar backed the Muslim Brotherhood, the Egyptian Islamist group whose offshoot is Hamas. Other sources say that advocating for Hamas is politically beneficial to Turkey and Qatar because the Palestinian cause draws popular support amongst their citizens at home. Some began to label Qatar a terrorist haven in part because it is harboring Hamas leader Meshal. They also harbor Husam Badran, former leader of Hamas's military wing in the northern West Bank. Husam Badran, current media spokesman for Hamas, was the instigator of several of the deadliest suicide bombings of the Second Intifada, including the Dolphinarium discotheque bombing in Tel Aviv, which killed 21 people. 
Turkey has also been criticized for housing terrorists including Salah al-Aruri, the senior Hamas officer, known for his ability to mastermind attacks from abroad. Al-Aruri is alleged to have orchestrated the June 2014 abduction and killing of three Israeli teenagers and to have started the 50-day war between Israel and Palestine, and now lives in Turkey, speaking in reference to Qatar's support for Hamas. During a 2015 visit to Palestine, Qatari official Mohammed al-Ahmadi, said Qatar is using the money not to help Hamas but rather the Palestinian people as a whole. He acknowledges however that giving to the Palestinian people means using Hamas as the local contact. Ahmadi said, You have to support them. You don't like them, don't like them. But they control the country, you know. Some argue that Hamas's relations with Qatar are putting Hamas in an awkward position because Qatar has become part of the regional Arab problem. But Hamas claims that having contacts with various Arab countries establishes positive relations which will encourage Arab countries to do their duty toward the Palestinians and support their cause by influencing public opinion in the Arab world. In March 2015, Hamas has announced its support of the Saudi Arabian-led military intervention in Yemen against the Shia Houthis and forces loyal to former President Ali Abdullah Saleh. In May 2018, Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan tweeted to the Prime Minister of Israel Benjamin Netanyahu that Hamas is not a terrorist organization but a resistance movement that defends the Palestinian homeland against an occupying power. During that period there were conflicts between Israeli troops and Palestinian protesters in the Gaza Strip, due to the decision of the United States to move their embassy to Jerusalem. China After the Hamas victory in 2006, China did not label it a terrorist organization and welcomed Hamas Foreign Minister, Mahmoud al-Zahar, to Beijing for the China Arab Cooperation Forum ignoring protests by both the United States and Israel but receiving praise from Mahmoud Abbas. China has harshly criticized Israel for its economic blockade of Gaza since 2007 when Hamas assumed control of the territory. Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesman Liu Jianchao stated, We believe that the Palestinian government is legally elected by the people there and it should be respected. In April 2011, a spokesman from China's Foreign Ministry embraced the Hamas Fatah agreement to form an interim government. In 2014, Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi called on Israel to lift its blockade and advised both Israel and Hamas to cease fighting. He reaffirmed support from China to the Palestinian people's right to establish an independent state. He told a joint press conference, China will grant $1.5 million in emergency humanitarian aid to the people of Gaza. In June 2018, China voted in support of a United Nations Security Council resolution vetoed by the U.S. that criticized Israel of excessive, disproportionate, and indiscriminate force by the Israeli forces against Palestinian civilians in Gaza during the 2018 Gaza border protests. Later the same day, China abstained from voting on a U.S. drafted resolution that blamed Hamas for the escalated violence. U.S.-based support Several U.S. Organizations were either shut down or held liable for financing Hamas in early 2001. Groups that have origins from the mid 1990s, the Holy Land Foundation (HLF), Islamic Association for Palestine (IAP), and Kind Hearts. The US Treasury Department specially designated the HLF in 2001 for terror ties. From 1995 to 2001, the HLF transferred approximately $12.4 million outside of the United States with the intent to contribute funds, goods, and services to Hamas. Quote, According to the Treasury Department, Khalid Mashal identified one of HLF's officers, Mohammed el Mazain as the Hamas leader for the U.S. In 2003, IAP was found liable for financially supporting Hamas, and in 2006, Kind Hearts had their assets frozen for supporting Hamas. In 2016, it was reported that the Boycott, Divestment and Sanctions Movement BDS against Israel includes a web of Hamas supporters from the Illinois-based organization American Muslims for Palestine AMP. Topic. See also 25th Anniversary of Hamas Hamastan Human Rights in the Palestinian National Authority List of Palestinian suicide attacks List of political parties in the Palestinian National Authority 
Topic. References. Topic. Bibliography. Mashal, Shal, Sela, Avraham, 2006. The Palestinian Hamas: Vision, Violence, and Coexistence. New York: Columbia University Press. ISBN 9780231140072. Muller, Sebastian, 2006. Hawala. An Informal Payment System and Its Use to Finance Terrorism, First Ed. Saarbrücken, Germany, VDM Verlag. p. 84. ISBN 978-3865506566. Roy, Sarah. 2011. Hamas and Civil Society in Gaza, Engaging the Islamist Social Sector. Princeton, NJ, Princeton University Press. ISBN 978-0691124483. Yusuf, Mosab Hassan 2010. Son of Hamas. Carol Stream, Il, Tyndale House. p. 288. ISBN 978-1414333076. External links Official website in English Official website in Arabic Britannica Hamas leaders CFR Hamas charter The Covenant of the Islamic Resistance Movement Hamas includes interpretation Hamas shifts from rockets to public relations The New York Times July 23 2009 22 years on the start of Hamas Al Qassam Brigade's information office Fatah and Hamas human rights violations in the Palestinian occupied territories in 2007 by Elizabeth Freed of Palestinian Human Rights Monitoring Group Siddiqui, Larbi, Tests and Contests, Hamas without Syria Sharifa Zuhar, Hamas and Israel, Conflicting Strategies of Group-Based Politics PDF file, December 2008 Hamas threatens attacks on U.S., terrorist warns Middle East is full of American targets Enet News. December 24, 2006. Accessed July 20, 2014.